Hi all. In this video, we will learn how to make the right choices while coding in terms of performance. We will see when to use for, for each and reduce with line level profiling and avoiding the array dot length in the for loops and getting the event dot target dot value as a number. We'll see this with coding example. So if we have a task, say we have array of elements, we need to sum up all the array of elements and console that sum. One can use for loop and one can use for each, one can use reduce to accomplish this task. So we can use any, any of the approaches to accomplish this task. But the thing here is we need to consider performance. In JavaScript, we have few ways. These are the few ways to measure the performance. So the one is console.time and console.time end. If we keep block of the code or function in between them, it will tell how much time it was taken to execute this block in terms of milliseconds. The same for performance.now. So we need to keep our block of code in between these two lines and uh, we need to console end time and start time to get the amount of time executed for this block of code. And also we have online tools like JS performance or JS bench. So these are the few ways to measure the performance of JavaScript piece of code. So in this example, I will be using console lot time. So we have three approaches. So fulfilling or completing the task is not the main approach. So here we also taken only few elements. So there may be n number of thousand or lakh of elements. We have taken console load time and calling that function. All the three functions. So let's see that in console. The output would be same for all the three function calling. But if you observe the milliseconds of execution, for loop taken 0 0.29 seconds and for each taken 0 0.17 reduce taken 0.14. In these terms, we need to pick reduce function because it was executed in short time. Also, we need to consider n number of things here. So we should not use unnecessary variables, unnecessary lines of code. So those also comes under the picture. We need to take that also in consideration. Along with this, we also can learn line level profiling. It means in JavaScript, we have a code like uh, this is a code of J JavaScript. It will uh, click uh, Control Shift P, type JavaScript profiler, which will help us in showing each and every line, how much time it was taken in executing each and every line. I have came to JavaScript prof profiler, start CPU profiling and refresh the page and stop it. So again, go back to the sources page. Here you can observe how much time it was taken to execute each and every line. So here there will be given, this is known as a line level profiling. So I have not done complete profiling. It may take some time, so I have stopped it. So you can do complete level profiling and uh, you can understand it will give each each line, how much time it was taken to execute. This is known as line level profiling. You can have this option in the developer tools, inspect and go to the sources, type control shift P, search for show JavaScript profiler and do a profiling, start CPU profiling, re refresh the page and stop the profiling. Then go back to the sources tab, you can find how much time it was taken to execute the code. So this is the first one. We need to consider performance while picking the right one, not accomplishing the task. We need to pick the right one, which gives us the result in terms of less time. So this is the one. So going to the second point, we have an array here. Usually everyone would be giving in this way, like array dot length. So this would be by default, we'll be giving in this way. For loop for i dot zero, i is less than array dot length. It means we are checking the condition and going inside the JavaScript code. Again, it com comes back and JavaScript compiler don't know what it is exactly, array elements dot length. 
so it will again evaluate this function it returns some value and it checks the condition and it go back so for each and every loop iterating every loop it needs to evaluate this value which is performance hit so in order to avoid this before the line you get the length of the array in a variable and replace this array dot elements with that variable now javascript compiler can understand this variable would be in terms of a, a value a constant value it would be a constant value so the time it comes to check the condition it just overrides the value it would be the length for us but for compiler it would be 10 so avoid array dot length evaluating array dot length in the for loop it will hit the performance so you can test this with the console lot time as well so coming to the third point third example so for i have taken one input field with the type number i can end for age or salary we can use the type number so here if i enter any value in the number field it will return us and we pick even dot target dot value usually we'll pick the events and values in this term even dot target dot value so if i enter any of the number here eight suppose eight if i enter so see if i give eight an int value as well but even dot target dot value will return us a string even dot target value will return as a string even we give the type as a number so again we need to convert this number into a this string into a number in order to evaluate further so to understand it is returning a string i have concatenated plus 5 for both of them so don't use even dot target dot value when we are working with numbers go with even dot target dot value as a number it will straight away give you the number it will not return string here there would be one more conversion i mean you will get a string value here again you need to convert that string value into a number in terms of again for the calculations so in order to avoid that just use even dot target dot value as a number which will directly return that in terms of number so in order to show you it is returning a string i have added 5 plus 5 if it is a string it will concatenate if it is a number it will add so i have given that so I have given eight. So eight five eighty five we got. We can conclude that even dot target dot value is returning a string. And if I give eight, eight plus five, it is return thirteen. So we can conclude that value even dot target dot value as a number is returning number. So use even dot target dot value number when you are working with type numbers. So that's all for the video. Thanks for watching.